Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Still here with us is a spokesperson for the Atiku campaign organization, Chagun Shoumi. Thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be here. So now I'd like your views on a state-by-state -state basis and analysis of PDP's chances. Let's start here in the Southwest, Lagos State. I think that Lagos State has been under one party and almost under the stronghold of one man. You think? Yeah, I think? Yeah, I think. I think okay. under one man, stronghold. He's been leader there, governor there, installing governors. And when he's angry with them, he can also remove them. I think that for Lagos, the free Lagos is now beginning to catch root. And Lagosians, they would, the APC is going to find out that the injustice they did to Ambode may end up being their Achilles heels in this election. But we'll have to see when the votes are counted. All we ask for in Lagos is a free, fair, transparent, and credible process. And if that happens, we'll call it for now 50 50. Let's go to Ogun. I'm not an APC man, but my heart bleeds for the sheer hypocrisy there. Their governor there, Ibikole Amosun, has done what he could do. He's been very loyal to the party. He's been very committed to the party. And the party leadership in the Southwest, for no reasonable reason, has decided to just embarrass him. So he has, the party has broken into two now. They have now ARM, or APM, what they call themselves, and APC. That was a needless mistake because the same people who cannot allow Ambode to do a second time are the ones who are acting the way they've acted. They are so no good. They are going to be toast. We've gone that route before in 2011. MPDP broke into two. The result was never palatable. So I think I'm calling that for PDP. But PDP is also a divided house. No, nah, the difference is this. We have been carrying that baggage for a while. So we have learned to know that we can argue. But when it comes to the issue of election day, we will vote for that party. We're not as sore as they are just starting now. You know, when you've been fighting and you've been arguing for a while, after some time, everybody knows the line that must not be crossed. But your dispute has gone all the way to the Supreme Court. It, yes, it does go to court. But what I'm saying is that that's to determine who is the candidate, what is this, which is that. That's OK. But in terms of the mass following, everybody's doing PDP. You're not seeing anybody saying they're the campaign. They're going to still do it. So I believe that we'll call that a 50-50. Let's go to Oyo. Ajimo B. His Excellency is a very funny guy. I've never seen any government official that is high ranking, that is as indecorous as him. He just said the other day, I just somebody called me, or one of the media called me saying that he was saying that anybody who voted for PDP was a bastard. Who talks like that? That's what he was alleged to have said. And you have forgotten that the strong arm that carries them there is the Minister for Communication, Shitu. He's, he's bitter, he's sore, he's unwilling to go. So when you look at how it is, you may just say, okay, he's not in the bag yet. He's, he's, he won the second time only by 30%, and now he has started injuring his 33%. So maybe he may just get the bloody nose. I want to call that in for us. Or sure, he took shutting down the entire country and rewriting the result for them to be able to get victory that is probably going to be thrown out in the court. So if they've done that to them there to even do a staggered election, what's going to happen to them in the general election? Time will tell. In a kitty. By the time you need about 30,000 soldiers and police to garrison only Payoche in a, an election for the state, how are you going to do it when it comes to... You see, when you rig, or when there is a perceived allegation of rigging, what it does to the party that has rigged is that it actually makes the people of that environment more bitter about it. So I'll call it it's for PDP. In the, oh, case, in the case of Undo, <laughs> Ara Kuni has taken over leadership there from APC, and he has just found out that on easy indeed lies the head that wears the crown. Some of the things that he's been writing are very populist on, he's no longer able to do that. A lot of his assembly members are quite unhappy with the way they are funding the bill. So we'll say, let's just call that 50-50. When you come to, where is left in the Southwest? We have covered the entire Southwest. So I will say that if the previous election is anything to go by, none of the parties can boast of an outright majority here. And then there's another thing that will give a lot of feeling to the PDP. The PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, has demonstrated that they listen to the yearnings of the people of the country. This country is made up of a few big tribes and a lot of other tribes. How dare us, between 1966 to date, begin to act as if there's a glass ceiling that the Igbos cannot shatter? Right now, we have brought them a very fine administrator of Igbo extraction, good in private sector, good in business, good in government, prudent and all that. So it's likely going to bring us a lot of the non-indigenous votes, especially the large Igbo vote. So I think that it may be 50-50. Since from history, no party has ever gotten 
take run, run, run away with it all. Okay, they used to win the state elections, but for the presidential election, it doesn't work. And I think Jimmy, it's Jimmy's time now, and it's Lagos time. And I think BDB may just, you know, it's been nice to, for us to even go and look at the books of APC after about 18, 16, 20 years, you know, just to go look at the books. Just go and ask, where's our resources? What has happened here? So we can audit them, so they can stop being hypocritical. We can look at that, oh, if they've run it well, we will know they're running well, and probably people can put them back, but they need, to, they need some time to go and rest to reintrospect and ask, have they done well for the mass of the people of Lagos State, or have one or two families cornered everything in Lagos State to themselves? That's what the verdict is in. And it's for Lagosians to decide. I will respect whatever they do, but I think they should go with Jimmy. That's the Southwest for you. Next zone. We're done in the Southwest. Let's go to the Southeast. <laughs> hey, I, I, I love it, Japanese. <laughs> if the APC is expecting any votes or major votes in the Southeast, they are dreamers. The movement and the energy that is driving the South is now is pro-restructuring, or even if you are even not even careful with the kind of this world, they even actually want to have a country of their own. So there is nothing that the South East is interested in that is reflected in what the APC is saying. So if we're talking restructuring, if we're talking opening up the economy, if we're talking business and all that, it's, it's music in the ears of the Southeast. Plus, when you now start adding Python dance to crocodile dance and all of the things that have happened to them there, including the fact that they're getting, in the, for, in the present era, between 1999 and 1999 today, they're getting one of their own as a president in waiting. I think you can call the whole of the Southeast for PDP. I don't know by what margin. We've never lost there, and I think we're not going to lose here now. But that even remains controversial. Oh. Jo just on Friday, Chief Olad Bode George, who is a chieftain of the party in Lagos State, uh, said that the party still remains divided over the emergence of uh, Governor Obi as the ro as running mate to uh, Atiko Abubakar. And he's pleading with uh, pa party stalwarts in the region to come together as a united front. No, so can, can you truly say that, you know, all is well and good in no, the South No, no, no. There is no party that all is well with, absolutely. After all, APC has just made a mess of uh, uh, Okorocha and Nemo. So that's going to cost them some things there. So I'm not saying that it's uh, the piece of the graveyard exists in any of the party. No. I'm talking about those who will vote. You see, we have one general generalization that is error. We always imagine that maybe the governor or one big person or one senator or one powerful person owns the collective will and opinion of the people in any environment. It doesn't work out like that. You're saying the governors don't own the structures? They, no, the they may the own the structure. The I said they don't own the collective will. It's possible for the governors of an environment to stay on one point, and it's possible in a democracy for the people to go elsewhere. So what I'm saying for the South East is that we've never lost it. Let's get that straight. All the history, we've never lost it. And we ain't about losing it now. So I'm calling, you asked me for my view, I'm calling the Southeast in the bag. For peace. In fact, what we're looking for in the Southeast now is not even victory anymore. We're looking for voter turnout so that the margin will be very big. Next one. <laughs> So is there any other any tactics that you guys are resorting to, like, you know, in the And agencies? you will expect me to tell you that I on mean, national television. The let me tell you what we, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you, I like this conversation. Let me tell you these tactics we're doing there. What we have said to our people is that, look, we will be honest with you. We will listen to what you're saying, we have been listening, and we'll come to you with a, an idea that will let us all come together and go with the best ideas on the table for you. And we're saying to our people in the Southeast and all of the country that we will do everything humanly possible to allow local government autonomy. The reason why we're saying that is that we have Atiku and Obi and our team have become convinced that there is no justification to imagine that Nigerians are only brilliant when they are in the presidency in Nigeria, in Abuja, and they are foolish when they are the local government. We're saying that if we can agree that some of them are good at precedence, for instance, or at the federal level, we can agree that some of them are good at governorship level, then we need to now agree that those at the local government can also be entrusted with the same set of responsibility. It is part of the reasons why we're not getting as much growth, because local government administration in this country is trifled, and so there's no competition. So we're telling them those are the kinds of things. And we're telling them that, guys, we are going to do matching grants 
matching grant to encourage any state that is improving on its IGR pumps. And we're going to give you more opportunity to be able to do a whole lot more than what the president arrangement allows you to do. So we believe that that message is sticking, and we said to them, we will be honest. We will not be parochial. Nigeria will work for all Nigeria. There will be no, if the wife of the president says two people have hijacked house, that can happen in a, in a PD president. We are not used to that kind of one person, two people hijacking everything. Those are the style of the, our opponents from Lagos all the way to Abuja. So now let's go to another PDP stronghold, traditional PDP stronghold, the South-South. <laughs> what do you make of Akpabio's inroads? Um, look, if you lose someone like Akpabio as a politician and as someone who wants to do a general election, you will not be too happy. You would have preferred that there was nothing to scare him so much to make him jump ship. And he cannot come to public space and tell us that we, uh, we, 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 and the Rika movement took place. No, he left for political consideration. But Akwai Bomb is going to determine two things for politicians generally in the country. It's going to help us determine whether it's an individual that owns the collective will and vote of the people, or it is the people that give one of their own the power to be a leader. And I believe that the last time I was in Akwai Bomb, I think that, at least for the presidency, Everybody is on the same page with Atiku. And for the state elections, I believe that all will be done to make it easy, but I'm not going to discountenance his capacity. Maybe some of the votes that ordinarily should come from Akpabio will be removed, but it will not be significant enough to affect the outcome. So Akpabio, I'm still calling it in the back. South, South, hmm. His Excellency, Yusun Wiki, strong man of the South, South, Mr. Project, a deliverer that is delivering to the administration of his party. A sure-footed fighter who stands for what is right and is very brave. God bless you, sir. That one is already in the bag. Um, uh, Delta, it would take magic to beat us there. Our man there, Okowa, very calm, very stable. The first time I saw Okowa be put in, form, in charge of an assignment, you know, you never know all of them deeply. When I saw him organizing the convention, the before this one, the one before, and then this one, I said, say, wow, I see a precedent in this guy. Very punctual, never late, very thorough, very detailed. But you've, Nobody... just said, you've just said that, you know, in a democracy, the governors can go one way and the people go the other yeah, way. But, yes. but in Rivers and, and Delta, you're shouting praises of the governor, you're so hopeful, you're so sure that the people will go that no, way. No, 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 I didn't say that. I'm only latching on the traditional voting patterns in those places. Don't get me twisted. Okay. I'm latching on the traditional voting pattern. So let's go and I am trying to show you that none of our flag bearers there has done anything to allow the people to turn against him. What would they say, Ricky? Center. Almost everybody in Nigeria has gone to Commission Road there. Let's go to another region where we have serious voting patterns yes. that are consistent, which is yes. the Northwest. For instance, Kano and Kaduna. What do you have to say? God bless you for that beautiful question. In 2007, when Umar Musa, our president of Blessed Memory, Al Janafi, that was with your portion, may God remove all the dust from your face because he was a good leader. When he was running against His Excellency Muhammad Bari, Umar Musa, Radwa beats him up to his polling boots there. I'm giving you this that you may know that the 2019 election, you're not going to be able to go to Northwest and be telling them, oh, one is a Muslim, one is a Christian, both are Muslims. You are not going to say, oh, one is a northerner, one, both are northerners. You are not going to say one is known and one is not unknown. Both are known. So what we're thinking there is that let's take the state by state in that area. Take Kano now. However you want to call Kano, you can call it for APC, but you cannot call Kwan Kwanso's vote for them. So the movement that Rabbi Musa Kwan Kwanso, His Excellency, has in Kano, that one is already out. Of their vote. Can and you confidently say that uh, Senator Kankwansu is working with Atiku Abubakar? Because we, have not, we are yet to see him speak publicly. No, I, 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 I you, have not been, you have not been following us well enough. If you had been following us well enough, you would have known that Rabbi Musa Kankwansu has attended the North Eastern Rally, this attended everything and he's spoken. And if you have been following us long enough, you would have noticed that there's something that distinguishes the Kankwansia people, that cap. We have never gone to any major big rally that the caps that are for Kwan Kwan so is not humongously plenty there. What am I trying to tell you? Kwan Kwan so is a very disciplined leader. He's been governor twice, he's been minister, 
He's a senator. He understands that politics is not about yapping and talking and jumping and shouting. If Kwan Kwan So were not to be with PDP, we, we know it and he will say it. He's never pretended to be a hypocrite. He is with the party now. I don't know whether you have any information to suggest that things will change tomorrow, but I'm just telling you that remove Kwan Kwan So's vote from the vote that you are going to give APC in Kano. Let's go to where you have Sokoto and Zamfara. In Sokoto, for instance, there are four parties, four principalities that control the emotions of the grassroots, generally because they've been there forever. There's Shagari, there's Wamako, with respect, there's Tambua, and there's Bafarawa. All three of them are on one side. So it's only Wamako that is left. So even if Wamako will win, let's agree, but it's not going to get the votes of the followers of those three. So that's going to reduce their number. Jump into which other state is there? Zamfara. Jump into APC's jump into problem. Kaduna. How would you, in all sincerity, expect that with the handling of Kaduna State by His Excellency, one of the persons I love the most in that party, His Excellency National Rufa, I loved him because he was PDP and I know he's brilliant. But how would you really say he would be able to take all the votes of the Shiites? He would take the votes of Southern Kaduna. He has gone to make a Muslim Muslim together. He would take the votes of the large Christian community. I'm not saying we will win, but take those votes away from him and bring it here. Which other state is left? Zamfara. They don't even have a governorship candidate in Zamfara. They have made such a mess of their own process to the extent that right now they don't even have a governorship candidate. So it may take the last minute if the Supreme Court gives them the leeway before they can have a candidate. How did they get themselves into that mess? Is going to, they are going to pay dearly for that carelessness there. Who is who's left? Katsina. Yes, Katsina will, I believe, His Excellency, the President, will do well at home because they will give him home support. And he will do well in some of these places. I'm only saying the numbers will not be as impactful. But in Katsina, too, we'll put in a good effort and we'll see how well we do. We'll, re, we'll try to reduce the numbers there, but they can't run away with everything. I've just told you what happened when he was contesting with a fellow Muslim. So we have finished. The Northwest. Let's go to the Northeast. Mm -hmm. In the history of Nigeria, only one Northeasterner has been allowed the right to even preside at the top level, which is Tafa Balewa. After how many years? And we're talking about one North. So I believe that the hunger for a Northeastern man not to start to feel like a minority within their so called North has become so ripe that they will give numbers. Adamawa, you will really have to be the disciple of Satan to take it from Adamawa and give it to them. Taraba, the engine that is moving Taraba is Dairus and Mama Taraba. How you are going to overrun those two people and their machine? Because some of them are real grassroots. It will not be very easy. Which other state is left there? Yobe, maybe they will try there. Where you have Dan, Dan Kwambo? Gombe, eh? How? I'm not saying they won't get votes, but they're, they're going to get, the thing is going to be almost evenly split. Now let's go to, where is, where is it? Not said, ha <laughs> ha. Hey, let me stand up for him. The cat with nine lives. Bukola, sir. Thank you very much. I didn't even have to make, mention his name. Bukola Saraki has been trained in the act of politics. You may have, you have your issues with him, but you cannot say that Bukola doesn't understand how to read the political environment. And you cannot say that Bukola does not have a movement. You cannot say that, however, there are the entrenched interests, and people always have issues with entrenched interests. You cannot say that Bukola's vote is still going to go to Buhari. I don't know who will win Kwara, but at least you can take Bukola Saraki's vote away from there. Whatever you want to say of Dino Milai, are you going to say that Dino's vote and the votes that Dino can bring to the table in Kogi will still go to Buhari? These are all, I'm telling you the votes that Buhari got in 2015 that he's not going to likely get now. And if you come to Josh and Benue, will the people of that area, in all seriousness, look at the amount of blood of their people that has flown? without real consequences for the perpetrators, without government bringing the stick to punish people, and you will expect them to start to reward them with all their votes. I'm not saying they won't win there as well. See, see how cautious I'm speaking? But I'm saying that a greater number of those votes can't be for them. Who is left? Niger. Ah, Niger is problematic. 
Niger is problematic in the sense that for some times now, His Excellency Mohamed Dubare has been showing a lot of capacity there in spite of the fact that we won state elections. Even when we won state elections by Bangida Aliu, he still did well. So I'm going to say I'm calling Niger 60 for His Excellency Mohamed Dubare once again. And maybe about 40 for us. But it also depends on how excited people like Abusalam, Abangina, and all of the greater leaders of, of, of Niger will put their foot on the ground and drive things and work hard. It may come down to the numbers may be 50-50. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm not one of those who are saying that the election is in the bag yet. It's not. My greatest joy in the build-up to this 2019 election is that our democracy has matured. Gone are the days where one party is the only one that will just be running riot all over the country. In the minimum, we have two. And we also have a lot of young budding parties that are also doing well. Some of the candidates of the smaller parties, you have to concede that you are hearing some brilliant ideas from them. So you just know that all in all, there's only one thing required in the build-up to 2019. For all our sanities, for all our Nigerianness and all our future Nigerianness, we just want a free, fair, and credible election. I can walk away if I feel that we have not been cheated, but Nigerians didn't vote for us. It will be a great anathema and a great disappointment if you don't even get the legitimacy from the people and you want to lord it over us. So if we get a free, fair, transparent election, let every man campaign as vigorously as he knows, and may God, in his infinite mercy, on whose shoulders government rests, give victory to my candidate. His Excellency Atiku Abakan. Why? Because I know he'll create jobs, and we need jobs. He'll open up the economy. It'll make it bigger. We'll stabilize the country and unite it. We'll do security because we have the experience, and we will take care of the restructuring argument in a way that will be meaningful. Look, Atiku already hung a problem on his own neck. Atiku can't come and become president. Nigerians give him the opportunity. He can't come back to Nigeria and start telling them stories on restructuring. Because we have said it so loudly. That's what our Lord was shouting about. That's what your dad wanted. That's what all of the big leaders that have not been able to even achieve it because of the, you know, strong pegs that is holding down Nigeria's growth. If we put an article there and he can achieve it, he would have done us all a great favor. And if he does it in one time, I think he would have done his duty. But if Nigerians, for whatever reasons, choose otherwise, then we must also be ready so long as it's free, fair, and transparent, to respect the wishes of people. The thing in a democracy is that you can present yourself for an election. You can be voted for, and you can be voted against. Let's talk about no the democracy will work ambition, if nobody for, is contesting for against the incumbent. want of time, um, okay. let's talk about your ambition. We hear you're running for Belkota South uh, Federal Constituency. <sighs> um, that, from being article spokesperson to running, uh, okay, it, let me explain this, well, the, the question is that uh, people feel that you felt slighted because your role at the campaign was reassigned to Senator Dino Milai. What exactly is the story? Well, first of all, my role in the campaign was not assigned to the Are you still a spokesperson? Yes, I am. It was not, was not assigned. And you, cannot, you can't be a candidate after the primaries are over. What had happened was that for, for many years, I just used to be on the fringes and pushing them. But at the point, I started to say I didn't like the quality of representation that we were getting in Abiyokuta. So I thought, OK, maybe I better just put myself in the ring. And before Article's campaign started, I had done a whole lot of work. Billboards, everything was there. So when I then became the spokesman of Atiku, I, told, I asked myself, should I be really pushing my ambition so well when I've not gotten his own to get traction? So I just calmed everything down and put it down. I was just playing the politics in the background, and I was pushing his own narrative very hard. And all Nigerians who are fair to me will know that I have tried. Now, when, he now, when, I, when my, my primaries took place before his own, when my primaries came in, I said, OK, thank you, God. That's in the bag if I want to go with it. Then we were waiting on his own. I said, I knew he was going to. When his own came in, I said, OK, thank you, Jesus. This is also in the bag. I now have an opportunity of asking myself, if His Excellency Bukola Saraki is running for Senate and he's still the DJ of the campaign, and so many of them are running as governors and they are the leaders of the campaign in their state, why will I refuse to run and serve my own people when it's in the real sense of the word, it will only make me have better ability to keep telling him, Your Excellency, this is what we promised. This is what we promised. You need to get it done. Other than staying in the fringes and just doing like Sakeo, who went on stand on the tree, I'm waving to them, oh, I'm here, I'm here. I could have said I wanted to run for president. No one is going to stop me here. So I'm running for the Federal House of Prep, South Federal Constituency, Premier Local Government, big up to you people in Abiyokuta. 
because I think it's time for us to recreate our preeminence and to also show that what's the point in having legislators who don't contribute to debate, who are not looking at development from a human capital sustainable level, who are, not, who are over politicizing the process. You think I like the fact that they're just sitting down there shouting and doing booing and dancing and that's has to happen first, and hopefully if I win, I would, I'm praying that I can use myself as a model to show that governance is about service. Democratic governance is about a responsible legislator. You cannot over-politicize the legislator, because if you do that, you will strive for growth. And if there are people in the House who are telling guys, we have finished politics, let's do development now. Let's create laws that work for the country. Let's improve our oversight function. I'll be happy to sit in the parliament where we're discussing how to reduce the salary. I've often asked myself, what are we even doing with the bicameral legislation? But the constitution is the constitution. And if my people want me to come and serve them, I'm more than ready. And hopefully, wish me luck. I may be lucky. We wish you all the very best. We wish you all the very best. But in your statement, you know, announcing that you were running, that you were contesting, you cited all these factors as inspiring you to contest. Lawmakers playing politics, poor oversight function, politicking in the wrong direction. What exactly will you do differently? Can you elaborate on that? First of all, I believe that for people that South Federal Constitution, where I represent, I think that it is, it, is, it is almost irresponsible and laughable for you to be using the opportunity of constituency project to be buying motorcycles and generators. I think we have gotten to a point where our own constituency project must look to bigger things that help them to become sustainable. If I have the platform, I think that I believe that it's time for me to go and look for twin partners for that local government, maybe one in China and one in Canada. Why? I'm looking for the one in China so I can help them with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I'm looking for the ones in Canada to help them with human capital development or how to do sustainable social stabilization. These are the kinds of ideas we're playing with. And I know that they will get vibrant and quality registration because I'm not the kind of person that can sit in a parliament and be sleeping. I'm not the kind of person that will not come or show up to work every day. I'm not the kind of person that will just see somebody. In fact, I'm, I'm even scared that I hope I won't even be too different. Or I'm scared that I hope that they won't even be, I won't be so disappointed with how others, because there are a lot of people that are coming there. It's not just one person. But at least I believe that whatever it is that I can do for my own people, in terms of quality representation, look, don't you think that with all the roads we have and all the hotels we have, we're due for one national yearly event that can bring people there and do tourism? If I was partnering with you as your legislator, we can just sit and say, okay, which event are we going to bring? Calabar has one. Even the Jebus, give them credit, they have the GDO bar. Your Shoshobo has one. What do we have there? The one we call the Lishavi Festival, is that the best we can do? So we, I believe that we have reached a point where local governments or federal constituency must stop being a burden onto the state. And people should not go to Abuja only because they want to go and start funding petrol station or private sector stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm well brought up I'm, and I'm well settled. And, and my we, parentage is good enough for me to go there and not go and embarrass myself. I'm really more popular than most legislators all the now. We really um, wish you the way. best. Uh, coming from Ogun State that is divided uh, yes. under PDP, and we, we're yet to know which faction you belong to. Which other factions do you belong to? The courts will you see. If you want us to get into that, but that's another. Let's not get into okay, it. Thank so you. you belong to one of the factions. Yes, I, I, I think that I belong to the PDP that the court says owns the structure of the okay. party. All right, well, on that note, thank you so much for joining us on The Morning wow, Show today. Wow, ladies, I'm going to be calling you TVC's angels, just like Charlie's angels. That was All fantastic. Right. Arise, angels, forgive me. This Arising, was really yes. beautiful. I enjoyed myself. It was easy to talk to you. You guys are brilliant. Keep it up. It's a beautiful show. I think it's the best in the country now. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah, thank, thank you so, so much. I very appreciate think so. that. It's time now for a short break on The Morning Show. When we return, we'll have... Arise, we'll be here to review the newspapers. Yes. Do stay with us.